au pair is now i would um really appreciate it if you guys could please um share this video we are now live um global right now um i would appreciate it if i can get a five by five before we get stuck into the nitty gritty we have um we need to get ready um boys and girls no, i'm not joking um right okay let's just check the first is chrissy wales um then we got matt thank you sir and a few others yeah really appreciate it spot on right okay so you can see and hear me um i am going to come out of the chat okay um i will try and drop internet a bit later um all i need to know is the five by five is clear we got 258 right now that's good um if you can please share this video i would really um appreciate it um especially to get guys in here live if you can hit the thumbs up it will make sure that this video goes far and wide so we can get loads in the chat um also don't forget check the links underneath this video there is a newsletter that went out recently there's going to be another one going out on monday so go underneath the video click on to sign up for the newsletter and you will be one of the 6000 plus to receive the very latest hopefully weekly newsletter and don't forget if you are subscribed please check the notification bell if you want to take part in the chat you do need to subscribe right i'm coming out of the chat boys and girls we've got stuff to talk about right first things first um we are going to share just a very short video literally about 30 seconds long it's no big deal um, whilst we get people in here um if you're watching on a replay hi let's do this okay this um was when i was on my friend jason brashear's um, youtube channel we've done a few collaborations already um but this is when i appeared on this show and we are going to talk about what and why after this short video clip okay here's um, a recent one if i can get it out that one there that's a beautiful one too one yeah man those are beautiful but yeah works all the time <laughs> <laughs> never gonna run out of ammo with these you know yeah man <laughs> i really find it interesting that the second seal uses uses the word for small knife because that's like the preferential yeah. weapon to the type of people that are being inserted in these places too you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah sure it's yeah, crazy and back as all of that stuff goes back in the day i wouldn't be surprised if it's almost something identical to what the sikhs carry here in the uk for their ceremony of daggers right often yeah, pretty much see that coming so yeah let me just um stop that right 554 people in the chat yeah that was a short excerpt from what jason's recently compiled the video hit yesterday if you haven't seen that if you go underneath this video his video of what i'm talking about is there so mass credit goes out to jason Bashir's for his literally non-stop research into stuff that's coming down a pipe now this is um this could be perceived as really scary and to be honest i really hope that it doesn't happen and i hope that jason has this wrong what we have been witnessing um, around western countries um pretty much ramped up since 2020 um has really accelerated like it's just unbelievably crazy to ignore there what are we talking about migration not just into the uk into europe america canada and i believe in some parts of australia too so we're talking about developed first world countries are purposefully being drowned with migration now we're not talking about asylum seekers men women and children freeing fleeing war-torn countries no what we are talking about here in this video is fighting age male migrants predominantly from africa and the middle east literally flooding into all western countries this has been going on for quite some time 
Now, based upon Jason's research, looking into so many things, it's crazy. The easiest thing for you to do is to literally watch that video. There's no way I can summarize all of the important keynotes which Jason has put together, leading to what he believes is going to come to pass this year. I've also mentioned it on this channel for the last two years now. And the scary thing is, if you're in touch with intuition and you feel, literally feel, things are changing, okay? It's, it's even quite hard for me to actually mention. But based on what Jason's been saying and his research, he believes that during the Paris Olympics, between the end of July into August, during that time, he foresees possibly an uprising of these migrants that have been put all over Western countries. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, they are literally going to be alerted and are going to cause havoc. I know I've talked about this before, but to try and pinpoint a date is practically impossible. But based on Jason's research, he believes that we are potentially looking at the Paris Olympics this year. So when you have been witnessing this influx of these migrants all over, you will probably understand exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably seen it with your own eyes too. Things aren't like what they used to be. It really, really is not. So whilst we wait for some more to come in, like I say, I really hope that this um, doesn't come to pass. But nonetheless, based upon Jason's predictions so far, he hasn't been wrong yet. This has got to be horrific. Now, he's not predicting an end of days or anything like that. He's just saying about small arms. So we're not talking about guns. We're talking about knives, small knives. And we're going to get into that in a sec. Um, right we're just going to i don't know if you guys can hear this i've not done this before i'm going to turn the volume up in the run-up to the 2010 election then conservative leader david cameron famously said that he would get migration down to the tens of thousands almost 14 years later well over a million people are moving to the uk every year to paraphrase president trump many of them are bringing crime drugs and are a total drain on the economy so in order to cover up their failings, the government has simply decided to just stop releasing the data on the tax contributions and welfare usage of immigrants. You also won't be able to find a single stat on the immigration status of prisoners or arrest by nationality. Neil O'Brien MP noted that the data we need to have a more sensible conversation about migration is being deleted, not improved. Are you getting it yet? As more and more people are waking up to the problems that mass migration brings, the government is trying to put their hands over their eyes. Stop noticing that the streets are dirtier. Stop noticing Pakistani rape gangs. Stop noticing the assaults and robberies from gangs on mopeds. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Right, so that was just one thing um, the guy was talking about there. And we've had numerous reports. Um, I wouldn't like to guess how many videos that I've done already covering the, the, the issues with the planned uh, migration invasion. Now, I am not going to mince my words. I'm not going to beat about the bush. I'm going to call it out for what I believe what it is. And I believe that first world Western countries are being invaded, ready for some kind of uprising. I've heard the terms jihad being used before. There are many things which are leading to something. Now, some of you guys who have been watching me for ages now already know when I've been talking about this migration issue. The problem is what that guy's just said there is absolutely true. I have spent so many weeks and weeks and weeks over the last year, the last 12 months, trying to find statistics and data so we can get some sort of idea about the numbers of migration in not just the UK, we're talking America, Europe, etc. It's practically impossible. And even if you are presented with figures, it's almost impossible to prove that they are, in fact, genuine based 
factual numbers, figures. It's a practically an impossibility. I remember someone saying up to one million a year. Whether that's true, whether that's false, it's practically impossible. But what is simply undeniable, the amount of fighting age male migrants in cities and towns all over the United Kingdom has never been as high as what it is right now. And the strange thing is, it always seems to have been very quiet on that front lately. Why has it all gone quiet? Why are we being sidetracked with all of these BS stories about the royal family, the king, Kate, etc.? You name it, the amount of sidetrack stories that are being put out there is off the charts. It's basically daily now. So to try and navigate around all of these distractions and focus on what we are actually seeing with our own eyes in our own backyards, not just in the UK, like I said, all across the West. This is a massive issue. No, it is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. Like that guy said, I don't give a monkey's rat's ass if you think this is scaremongering or fear porn, okay? If you want to believe that, just go away and pray that nothing happens to you, especially this summertime. We need to make plans now. We need to start doing something now. Whether you want to book a holiday, make sure that you're away during when the Olympics is happening, whether you want to go to somewhere more rural or whatever it is, but erring on the side of caution to allow yourself to not heed this warning and stay in urban environments and something does happen, we are trying to make sure that we limit the carnage which is predicted this summer. I Like I'm saying, I would rather err on the side of caution than just think nothing's going to happen and then something happens. Who would have thought 9-11 would happen? But it did. Who would have thought COVID would have happened in 2020? But it did. Every single time a crazy, mad, mass event happens, what happens? Everyone is taken by surprise. Right. We got 1,000 people in the chat. That's awesome. Now, I've spoke about this, about the females of the UK, of what they are experiencing, okay? Um, if you're um, a female viewer watching this right now, let people know in the chat what you've experienced personally, what you've heard from other females. I'm just going to let this woman speak. This is such an important issue for me because I've been living in London for 10 years. I've also lived in multiple other countries around the world. Never before have I felt as unsafe as I do now. When I walk down the street, I'm increasingly being leered at. I'm increasingly having, I'm increasingly being followed like I'm going around the soups of Morocco. And it's not visibly to me anyway, people who were born and bred here. It isn't. And I, I, you know, it's very difficult because we're not allowed to talk about it because, oh, my gosh, you know, that's not that breaks taboo. Oh, you know, you're a racist if you say this. I'm sorry. A lot of women going about their daily business feel that their safety is being directly threatened by people who are coming from different cultures. And this needs to be discussed because I've had enough. All my other female friends have had enough. When I put this stuff online, the number of comments online from other women saying they've had enough and saying thank you for talking about this. Was it not enough when we noticed what was going on with grooming gangs? Was it not enough when we see what's happened to the victim of Abdullah Zaidi? When are we going to have the conversation that women's safety is being mortgaged at the altar of mass immigration and this faux political correctness? And I'll speak to many other women. Absolutely. Political correctness. Did you pick up on the verbiage then? It's absolutely true. Over time, if you say anything against any person who happens to have a different colour of skin, good, bad or indifferent, you are automatically deemed and marginalised as a racist. The fact remains, when we describe things, we use our eyes people are just describing what they see it's not being racist it's just an observation what we are seeing is 
this movement is just taking off. And we've already spoken about police numbers in the UK are at an all time low. Recruitment for the police in the UK has never been lower. Not just the police, armed forces. The, the amount of armed forces currently serving right now is at a very low state. The amount of recruitment or intakes into the military is at an all time low. There was even talk about conscription recently. So we have got all of these fighting age male migrants pouring into the United Kingdom unchecked. We've got no idea about their past whatsoever. Not only that, thanks to our prime minister, he is fast tracking the majority of these migrants to allow them straight passage towards citizenship. When you receive UK citizenship, you are allowed to join the military. Let that sink in. I am not making this up. This isn't some conspiracy theory. This isn't right-wing extreme propaganda. These are facts. This is happening. And I really hope to God that it doesn't kick off this summer like our friend Jason Brashears has already said. If you want to watch that video, the link is underneath this one. It will explain everything. What about the money? People say to me when there are issues, follow the money. Well, I want you to listen to this guy. Very, very simple English. Please tell me how many people who we define as migrants are not working and what has it cost us in the last few years? So Nigel, last year we actually saw a record in the number of people that are arriving in the UK and then not going on to work. It's actually worse than what you say. It's not unemployment, it's economic inactivity, which means they're not between jobs. They're not waiting to start a new role. They are actually not in a role and they're not seeking a new role. Um, we found through ONS data that there were about 1.13 million people currently economically inactive having arrived here on a visa, whether that be work, dependent or study. We have also found that since 2020, £24 billion pounds has been spent on providing services such as education, police force, transport, and then housing communities on these individuals as well. How crazy is that? £24 billion that we know about, which has been spent on these individuals who are not going to be working, that are not going to be contributing to society. You have to be blind to not notice what's going on what's going on in our towns and our cities but not just that in rural areas too there are villages which have these migrants in let me know in the chat if you've seen anything like this where you are what have you noticed and indeed if you're watching this on the replay um, let people know in the comment section just what you have been seeing with your own eyes. Right. Right, okay, we're just queuing this up. Um, let me just um, remove that in case there's any echo. Right, so it is of my opinion based upon the research which I do. Now, I have taken it upon myself to do this as a full-time job, okay? So I am finding time to do the research. Not many people actually do the research. They just take information at face value and just redistribute it. When you spend time cross-reference and looking into things, like I've been doing for the last year or so, and it's quite astonishing what you can dig up okay so it's of my opinion that when these migrants came over here they were put into hotels yes i know lots of us already know about the crisis and the problems with these fighting age male migrants coming into 
hotels all over the United Kingdom. I don't know if it's the same in America. I suspect maybe it is. Um, if you're watching in America, whether you're watching live right now or in the replay, can you let people know if you have been hearing stories or seeing with your own eyes these fighting age male migrants literally being put up in hotels at the expense of government funding? So government funding ultimately comes from us, the citizens, our taxes literally go towards the governments so they can run the admin behind the scenes. Now, I believe that these hotels are actually processing centres. These migrants would come into the UK. Majority of them will be via boat, via the English Channel. Some reports have claims that some have been aircrafted into the UK as well. And maybe some on the tunnel. Who really knows? But the fact remains, there is a lot of them here and it is getting out of hand. So once all of these hotels have been filled up, then what? They can't keep these hotels occupied forever. Of course not. I've already talked about this in numerous videos on my channel. Please feel free to type in into a YouTube search, Funky Prepper Space Migrants, and you will be met with a whole host of videos, evidence, footage, and research, which has gone into trying to understand what the frigging hell is going on across the West with these migrants. They are all being paid by Serco. If you don't know what Serco is, check it out. If you don't believe there are links to the royal family, check it out. There are facts, okay? Now, how many of you have gone to book into a hotel since 2020 only to find that there is no room at the inn? Probably some of you, probably none of you. Let us know in the chat if you've tried to make hotel booking for a holiday or whatever, only to be told that there are no vacancies. You will probably be met with the terms corporate booking. A corporate booking is a buzz term for the fact that that hotel has been entirely booked just to hold migrants not asylum seekers, not refugees, fighting age only migrants, corporate bookings. So what does that do to the local communities where these hotels are based? They're not going to be doing very well, especially in high season, moreover, the summer months. Because why? What happens? You've got a hotel at a seaside resort, Skegness, Absolutely. There is untold amounts of hotels all over the UK, and I suspect there to be thousands of hotels, not hundreds, but thousands that have been entirely fully booked, jam packed with only fighting age male migrants. If you think I'm telling porky pies, check it out for yourself. You will be shocked to what is absolutely really going on out there. It's insane what's going on. So, yes. These local facilities around the hotels are going to be struggling. Moreover, businesses. Why? Because these migrants that are coming over here, they haven't got any money. They get given money for free from our government. And you can take your pick as to what you believe the amount that they actually get. But nonetheless, they're not going to be spending the government or moreover our money putting it back into the community, are they? No. So what are we talking about? Restaurants, bars, clubs, cafes, souvenir shops, call them whatever you will. There's no holiday makers at the hotels. They're not going to be getting people to spend money in their community. And what are we going to see? We're going to see businesses close. It's obvious because when people go on holiday, they usually stay in hotels. Not only that, B&Bs as well and Airbnbs. Yes. Absolutely, all of this has happened across the board, not just hotels, but B&Bs as well. Serco have literally approached every single hotel in the UK in every single B&B proposing, would it be OK if we was to take over the running of your hotel, keeping on one member of staff only, and we will pay for everything because we need to house these 
asylum seekers, which are in fact migrants. Okay, these migrants are arriving in brand new jeans, brand new trainers, very expensive smartphones, fresh barber cut hair, and jackets and everything else. They look far removed from a refugee who is fleeing a war-torn country. How many of you have seen the same? Whether it's on the news, videos, or you've actually seen it in your own town centre. What have you seen? Can you let everyone know? Because the more people that we can get to see these videos, to actually understand what is really going on, the better. So if you can please share this video and give it a thumbs up, it helps get this out there. We need to be aware of what's going on and what is coming down the road. Only a few months from now, we need to be prepared and we need to start getting ready and making plans. We hope to God it doesn't happen, but nonetheless, we don't want to put ourselves in a vulnerable situation where we are likely to become a victim if we are not prepared. Don't forget, these migrants over here, we know nothing about them. We don't know what their background is. We don't know what their criminal records are. We don't know the horrors that they've seen. And we all know the basic gnosis that the attitude towards women is disgusting, not welcome in our culture. They don't respect and value women. It's disgusting. Hence what that woman was saying earlier about the attacks and being leered at and all of the rest of it. It's just simply not on. Where are the policemen? All this is happening. Have any of you witnessed any of these crimes and contacted the police only to wait around and no police ever turns up? Let us know. We need to know what's really going on. OK, so we've got the hotels, which I deem are processing centers. They stay at a certain amount of time at these hotels. Now, let me tell you this. Serco has corporate booked many hotels all over the UK for how long? A minimum of two years, two years. And that two years is coming to an end very soon. So the predictions that Jason's been looking into with the ending of the leases for these hotels could spell that this could absolutely be factual. And like I keep repeating, I hope to God it doesn't. I really hope this doesn't happen. We have already seen knife attacks on the rise all over the UK, especially London, Birmingham and Liverpool. Very, very crazy what's going on with knife crime here in the UK. So after these um, individuals are placed into these hotels, which I call processing centres, then they are strategically distributed to residential houses, private lets, all paid by Serco, yes, I've covered this already. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you are only finding out this for the first time. If you are, can you please share this video because we want other people to watch this and comment because we are really keen to learn what they believe is happening with the information which I'm presenting right now. It's very important that we get a non-biased overview about what we are seeing. We are talking boots on the ground. All of you guys in the community, we want your help to tell everyone what you are seeing and what you are hearing. Because let's face it, we can't trust the Sun newspaper. We can't trust the BBC, can we? No. 1,450 in the chat, that's awesome. We need more. If you can share this, get them in there. Hit the thumbs up if you please. That would really help to alert people that this live stream is happening right here, right now. We need people in there to contribute to what people are seeing and hearing. So yes, believe it or not, once they go into hotels, they then go to B&Bs and then maybe then they go to houses or they go straight to B&Bs and then houses. But these houses are strategically placed all over the UK. They are predominantly in urban populated environments. But we have also have evidence that we are seeing a rise in these fighting age male migrants in villages, in rural areas. I myself have witnessed this with my own eyes firsthand. And I can confirm that what I have seen is absolutely genuine. 
and it's quite unnerving actually to see because we would automatically think that it's just going to be in big cities no this is trickled down to village level if any of you guys um, are living in villages or you've recently visited villages over the last few years on holiday or to visit friends and you've seen it with your own eyes we're talking fighting age male migrants between 17 and 35 years old men only we're going to get onto that in a sec not only have we seen hotels bnbs airbnbs and residential houses with these people in We've also got barges. If you think I'm crazy, well, it's about time that we went over to um, the share screen just so I can quickly show you. So here we go. Anyone can do this, and I urge you to do it because I know people, some people just aren't going to believe me, but I'm just showing you this is what happens, okay? Go into Google and type in UK migrant hotels into images, and then you can see for yourself how many images we have of these hotels with these migrants ram packed in there look at this some of you will remember when i posted this ages ago there is over 300 hotels this is over one year old now this is already out of date this number has massively grown and we're not even talking about ireland now, any of you guys watching in Ireland, let everyone know what you are seeing because we want to know the truth. I've been hearing all sorts of really, really dire situations going on in Southern Ireland. It's unbelievable from what I've been hearing. I can't vouch for it myself. I've not been there. But lots of people I know have been telling me it's absolutely a nightmare in Ireland. And of course, it's not part of the UK, it's European, so you're not going to find it on a lot of UK data and information regarding the migrant situation here in the UK. Okay, so that is just the hotels. Now, like I said before, and I know some people are going to slate me and say, prove it, okay? Well, Serco has absolutely bought lots of private lets for residential houses. Here we are, migrant Serco houses. You can type that in to Google Images and you can look. Serco are absolutely, I've given so much evidence and proof of screenshots of all sorts of information, even on the Serco website, where they openly state that they are housing fighting age male migrants into private residential houses no circo 300 homes this is one protest going on in glasgow alone 300 houses just in glasgow wow there's one of my videos which i talked about this before the uk migrant housing plan exposed if you haven't seen this video it's only 10 minutes long i suggest you watch my video here you can find it just by doing migrant circo houses on google images and you will find this video it just goes on boys and girls i am not making this up this is absolutely really a thing and if you don't believe me like i said there is a barge floating off the uk with around 500 fighting age male migrants in if you go into google images and type in migrant barge you will see for yourself 500 they the left keep saying asylum seekers these people are not seeking asylum they are all fighting age males if these were asylum seekers where are the children where are the women and where are the elders where are the disabled the truth is there is zero they are between 17 and 35 years old, male only. Why? That's what we need to ask. That's what we need to monitor. We need to patrol. We need to make sure that our streets are safe because it doesn't feel like it with the lack of police out there. It's absolutely true. This barge exists. This is what it's like inside. 
Wow. Everything is free. They are getting paid money. They have gyms. They have gaming facilities. They have bars, everything. All being paid for by us through this very dodgy, evil, unscrupulous individual who happens to be a member of the World Economic Forum, Rishi Sunak. Yes, we all know about him and his dad and Infosys with Digital ID. One very shady individual who's got his fingers in many pies, and one of them is making a lot of money with Serco and this floating barge. I am absolutely not making this up. And to add salt to injury, it gets worse. Not only are they being held in hotels, B&Bs, private houses, floating barges, they are also being held at very historical, amazingly awesome MOD sites like this one, RAF Scampton. Now, if you don't know anything about RAF Scampton, this base was where the dam busters flew their raids from, a very deep, rich, historic site, only to be fully converted to house up to two thousand there we are two thousand fighting age male migrants and there is only one thousand people in this village so how does that make you feel how would that make the one thousand residents of that village to have double their own personal population by fighting age only males don't forget no women no children no elderly no disabled i'm just putting it out there because i know people are going to take the rice and they are going to say i'm making this up i am not making this up 100 percent not also what have we seen lots of these males hang around in groups why is that a minimum of two and i mean a bare minimum it's usually four now, any of you guys who have served in the military will know what I'm talking about. I spent time in the military some years ago. And um, in the infantry, we used to operate four man brick patrols, a minimum of four men. We have been seeing this on numerous occasions where there are four fighting age males at any one time walking around high streets, shopping centers, going out to the town in taxis, etc. Yes all smartly dressed they don't look poor at all they've all got brand new phones pretty much brand new clothes and they get given free money by our wonderful benevolent government yes we are being screwed big time don't forget that guy said how many billion since 2020 has been spent that's probably doubled already it's not looking good at all so we are seeing these groups hanging around between a minimum of two and maybe a maximum of eight or maybe even more let me know in the chat or in the comment section have you seen any of these fighting age male migrants in groups in your town center where is the town center have you seen it once do you see it on a regular basis what's the minimum has anyone ever seen one fighting age male migrant on his own. I doubt that very much. This is military tactics. The military have always done this. Whatever you serve in the military, you are told as a recruit, when you go out to have a few drinks or whatever, always make sure you've got your buddy with you. In the military, they call it the buddy buddy system. You always make sure that you're not alone. You've always got your buddy, your mate with you, a minimum of two and invariably, you know, in the military, they'll go out in platoon strength, so 20 or 30 in a squad of eight or even a brick in four. These numbers are being seen. Not only that, we are seeing them in MOD bases. And RAF Scampton is not the only base in the UK. Let me know where you know the other bases are. Bonus points. I've already spoken about this in videos. This is for the benefit of the newcomers who are finding their way to this YouTube channel with this information. I welcome everyone who's new, and I hope you guys are doing okay.
like I said, where's all the women? Where's all the children? Where are all their parents? How many of them are disabled? None of them. Surely that's got to make you ask questions. Like I said earlier, with that woman who was talking on the phone, assaults on women have gone up big time. How many actually get reported? And if they do, how many of those figures absolutely make it to the ONS, the Office of National Statistics? The truth is, we don't really know. I find it really hard to quote statistics. I do, because to try and find the truth behind statistics is very difficult, practically an impossibility. So what can we do? We can use our intelligence. We can use us as a community, boots on the ground, of what we are absolutely seeing. What are we seeing? That's what I'm saying, it's so important. If you can like this video, give it a thumbs up because what that does is it makes this video go out to more people so they can see it and they can make it into the live chat. We've got 1,500 right now in this chat. Now, how many of you have seen or heard assaults on females we're not just talking about the UK, we're talking about America as well, and Canada. But what about Europe? What about the millions of people that live in Europe? What are they seeing? We've already seen turmoil in France, and it's absolutely kicking off in France. That is an absolute hotbed of extreme activity, shall we say, and that's putting it frigging mildly. They are literally coming in from Africa, making their way through into france spreading all over europe but not just africa we're talking about they're coming over from the middle east from eastern europe not just africa so we are seeing from the south and from the east and they're literally just spreading all over the west now is this by some weird coincidence no how many of you believe that this is a plan i've heard of deagle i've heard of that I've heard of Kaligi. I've heard of that too. Even Enoch Powell a long time ago said similar things. What we are seeing is a mass movement of migration to literally take over Western culture and civilization. If you think that's a conspiracy and it's right wing, time will tell. What would be interesting if you firmly believe that these people over here, these fighting age only male migrants, are literally fleeing from a war torn country and we need to help them? How many of you believe that? And if you do, are you prepared to have some of these fighting age only male migrants in your own home with your family? Let's have it right. I'll bet you any money, none of you do. You have to put your money where your mouth is. I've been on protests. I have. I've seen firsthand and I spoke to people. And the overwhelming majority of people that you're going to speak to all over the UK, it's like the elephant in the room. It's not being discussed as much as it should be. But let me tell you this. All over the UK right now, there are groups forming online and offline in pubs, groups, organizations, whatever. Things are happening. Plans are being made because you have to be blind not to see what's coming. This is absolutely an invasion which is going to happen. Like I said, Jason believes that it's going to be the end of July, early August this year. And I hope to God he's wrong. I really do. And I can't repeat myself enough on that basis. I absolutely can't. We're just queuing up. Right, okay. Here's another thing. This is the latest on X, um, what we are talking about here. I can't, some of this stuff I can't really show because um, YouTube will ban it because X is literally, you can get away and see and say all sorts of things. But on YouTube, it's very left and it will just get pulled, okay? The... Um, even this, which is going crazy right now, this video is going all over the place. 
how to fraudulently claim disability benefits by pretending to have problems with snoring, etc. It sounds bonkers, but these migrants are doing whatever they can to get by because the money that the government are giving them, they are not happy with. They're not allowed to work and they want more. So they are turning to crime. Absolutely. This is in Germany. Look at this. A police are searching for six migrants who gang raped two 14 year old girls in Germany. This was three hours ago. This is currently over in Ireland. Protests are happening. This was two hours ago in Ireland. This is going on in America. In New York, they are going to have huge problems, especially this summer. Lots of this in America, um, they're doing all sorts of efforts to try and cover it up. But some of the things which has been exposed, which is really cool that people are going out with their phones and recording and reporting this. This is not just the UK. It's happening all over the place. Who has heard about the crazy homeless situation, people living in tents and caravans, not just in America and L.A.? What about Bristol? Has anyone heard about that? It's crazy. All the caravan parks and the problems in Bristol. And um, you I can't show that. It's too violent. It's going to get pulled. But yes, um, we are seeing lots. This is the Irish Minister for Immigrations. People are finding out their houses are where these ministers live and they are protesting. We are going to be starting to see this very soon here in the UK. People are not stupid. It's not going to take a genius to find out where MPs live. Recently, within the last 12 months, there was a big funding pot provided to give MPs protection. What are we talking about? CP, close protection from security. Yes. Why? I wonder. People are getting smart. People are getting savvy. People are organising. People are taking the fight straight to the MPs' houses, their residencies. Yes, they're finding out where they live and they are protesting. They're putting banners up, etc. This stuff is not going to go away. It's absolutely not going away. Right, I'm just going to drop into the chat because it's been a while. I hope you guys are good in the hood. Um, thank you for the donations, guys, by the way. Um, I really appreciate it. And the new members, that's awesome. Um, Rachel, good to see you in here, honey. So what are we talking about then? According to our friend Jason, Jason Brashears, his YouTube channel is Archaics. You can watch that video from his YouTube channel underneath this one. Tell him I sent you. He will appreciate it. We're mates, and hopefully we're going to be doing another live stream in the next couple of weeks. I've got so many people wanting me to hook up with other preppers around the world because what we are seeing is the same things happening. Like I said, it's not just the UK that this is happening. In America, it's gone large. It's huge. It's wholesale. Even in Canada. Can you believe it? In Canada, migrants are going up there where it's cold. How long will they stay there and stick it out in Canada? Tom will tell. St. George's Day in London is going to be interesting. Yes, we've already seen um, inflammations. No. We have also seen um, poking the hornet's nest regarding the pro-Palestinian guys. Now, most of us already know that that is absolutely funded. It's not a grassroots organisation. There are some sinister individuals behind the scenes at the top of that organisation. Who remembers George Soros? Yeah. Who remembers the Black Lives Matter protest in America? Who remembers Just Stop Oil? This pro-Palestinian thing they're all the same same individuals all at the top so yeah they are literally going to be poking this hornet's nest the amount of stuff that they're pulling in America now 
Um, I've got a good friend, Jason. He's over in New York. Some of you will know him. He's called the Angry Prepper. I'm trying to find some time to hook up with him and do a live stream too. So if you want to see me do a live with Jason, the Angry Prepper, let us know in the, um, the chat and indeed in the comments if you're watching on the replay, of course. Um, the more people that okay that, absolutely, we're going to put it up the list of proceedings to get it done sooner rather than later. Because Jason is a firefighter. He was there during 9-11. The stuff that he's been seeing about this migrant situation, he lives right in the middle of New York City. He is literally boots on the ground. And the stuff that he's talking about on the angry truth and the angry prepper is insane. He is expecting it to go off big time this summer. And it also correlates exactly the same time as the Paris Olympics. We can talk about even some of you guys, you know, I've done some research and I've crossed all um, things going to the book of revelation the first seal the breaking of the first seal started just before covid happened in 2020 that first seal came to an end during the eclipse which is just past the breaking of the second seal will start during the paris olympics and we are going to see literally muslims versus christians they're not going to get away with it. It's going to be crazy for a week or a month. And it's going to involve small knives. Daggers. Like this. That sort of weapon will be used. Not just daggers. Fighting knives as well. Okay. All of that sort of stuff um, is literally being predicted to come to pass the end of july going into august um i've already done a video on this absolutely some of you in the chat right here we go here's the time frame for you guys so we're looking at the 26th of july going up to the 11th of august okay so during this time, our friend Jason believes that it could trigger all of these um, Muslim fighting age male migrant dagger fest all over the West. And I know it's not supposed to rhyme, but yes, that's what he believes based upon his research. And he is staking his entire reputation on this. OK, because if it doesn't come off, this is a big thing to do. Jason's literally grown a YouTube channel from scratch only a few years ago. And the the rate of people joining his channel is astonishing. He has opened up the whole arena for people to debate him about what he claims. And not one single individual has dared to challenge him on his research. Not one. He is calling out people left, right in Chelsea. Billy Carlson, that lunatic. Graham Hancock called them both out. They will not debate him. They will not because they are in the wrong. Like I say, we really hope that Jason's got this wrong. But if this comes off, my advice is to sort of be away from urban populated areas during this time frame here. That's what I would do myself. We're not even talking about the opening ceremony for the Olympics of what that entails. We've already talked about in depth about the 2012 London Olympics of what was shown there in ceremonies or should we say rituals, let's be bloody clear about this, all of that stuff that was shown back in 2012 has happened in 2020. How would they know? How would they be able to get it with so much accuracy? They can see into the future. Well, based upon um, research that we're looking into, everything... <clears throat> Let me have a drink. Check in the chat. 
How are you guys doing? Yeah, Hancock and Joe Rogan, yeah, I know. Benny Hill, pretty much the same. Very, very good point. I um, I talked about that on, <clears throat> on the interview I done with Jason. Yeah, ceremonial daggers. Yes, absolutely on point. International Monetary Fund. Yeah, good shout. Right. Okay. You guys are awesome. <laughs> yes, I know. It's crazy the stuff that's coming down the pipe. So, um, so what can we do to be prepared for this? Like I said, the easiest thing is to not be around if and when this kicks off. If you have holiday to book, it might be a good idea to book it for those dates. Just go camping somewhere. And if nothing happens, and I hope to God it doesn't, then at least you've had a break because we all need breaks. Someone just said, I'll oh, tired and I need a break. <laughs> well, thanks for that. We all need breaks, don't we? So, um, Mr. Brighton, yeah, here we go. Here's the dates in question. Friday the 26th of July to the 11th of August, which happens to be a Sunday. So the opening ceremony is on the 26th. The closing ceremony will be the 11th. Between those two dates is looking very, very sinister. Like I said, isn't it a weird coincidence that all of these big block corporate bookings for a Serco for all of these migrant hotels, Airbnbs and residential houses, all of those leases comes to an end in the end of July? What are the chances? What are the odds? If you was a betting guy, what would you do? I'll tell you what I would do. I would take heed of that warning and start to do something. The worst thing, the hardest thing to do on YouTube is to predict things like this to dates. It is very dangerous. It can be very scary, of course. And it could also make someone look crazy with egg on their face. But that's why you always say we don't know. But this is what we got to work with. I'm hoping that people understand this and try to do something. One thing which would really do all of our heads in is just say that this absolutely happened. And Jason and I spoke about this and no one done anything. And there was lots of people who disappeared during those times who didn't need to. So I really hope, I hope and I pray that Jason's wrong. I seriously do. But all I can say is we need to do something. Because like I said, don't think for a second that the police are going to come and save your ass. They just won't. One, there's not enough of them. Two, they're going to be called off to bloody because someone's complains that someone's had the piss taken out of them because of one of their 13 genders or something. It's ludicrous. So, yeah, according to um, the research um, from translated from the Greek, that he believes that it's going to be small knives, daggers over a large area. Now, the large area we deem at this moment in time to be the West. Moreover... You, excuse me, Europe, UK, America, and Canada. I don't even know if Australia is going to be pulled into that. I really don't know. So we're just going to drop out of the chat because it's really, really disruptive. Um, like I say, look at the sideshows that we've had so far. You know, is the king dying? Is he going to be gone? I've already said the king will not be king this year. I said any time. Before Christmas, this guy will no longer be our king. I am not going to say whether he dies, whether he steps down, whether something's come out about the real reason why Diana was killed. We don't know. 
All I know is that he is not going to be king this year. Another sideshow and a distraction. So, look. Refugees, welcome. Thanks to these guys who are severely naive, entirely brainwashed. How many of these in this picture would you say have migrants staying in their houses? I would like to guess that not one single person in this photograph has a migrant staying in their house. Not one. But I'll tell you what is a reality. That we've got Henry back in the house. 8.2%. Henry Westons. Yes, sir. And we have got a 50 cal round to open her up. Of course. That's what we need to do. And not only that, we've got an old school, genuine, proper pint pot. None of that silly little French Stella Artois stemmed glass nonsense. No, mate. We are using real heavy duty, solid, handled pint pots from back in the day. Here we go. Cheers, Henry. Always a pleasure, never a chore. Cheers, boys and girls. Mm. Wow. What a week it's been, eh? We've all been having those crazy weeks and um, we continue to push on. So what does it look like? These guys coming over here. Absolutely rammed to the rafters. The amount of these migrants that are coming into the UK, like I said, is at an all time high. It's absolutely astonishing of what's going on. So you can have many, many migrants in, in a large boat. You can have lots of small boats. Nonetheless, they are coming over here and they continue to come over here as well. Yeah, well, I just saw something that um, reminded me of a video I've done. Now, look at this. Who remembers when I talked and I exposed this group here, Care for Calais? This organization is part of Hope Not Hate. And we all know the left, the liberal, the democratic side of that. Yes, unbelievable. We've had. Lots of people who have been literally up in arms about the RNLI and their involvement into bringing these fighting age male migrants to the shores of the United Kingdom. So many people have boycotted the RNLI because of this. And this continues to happen as well. It's just astonishing. A UK migrant centre attacked. Some of these uh, migrants are destroying their own residencies. Brand new, fitted out, funded by the taxpayer, and they just smashed the whole lot to bits. Our money, yes. What about the border force? I just don't, I just don't understand what their function is. I mean, like I said, the numbers, the statistics are very, very hard to prove and to go with. Wow. Migrant hunts. What is this about? It doubles in one year. More and more people have had it up to here and doing something to try and stop this crazy stuff which is coming down the road. Like I say, the powers that be love to marginalise people. They love to pigeonhole people. They love to name people. 
So if you believe in this, you're going to be called that, etc. It's just insane. So, yes, the attacks have been on the rise. There are so many reported incidences which are just not making it to the news. But nonetheless, we are seeing and hearing all sorts of reports in our capital cities around the United Kingdom. And I keep saying it's not just here. You would be amazed to discover that what we are seeing here in England and Wales, Scotland and Ireland is going on in America. Like I said, you guys in America watching right now, what are you seeing? Like I said, we've got reports that the stuff which is happening, the crime, my God, the crime just in New York and LA as well, is through the roof. Some people are stating that there are empty properties in America and these migrants are literally squatting. They are finding these properties, getting in there and doing whatever. And lots of it, is circled around crime and drugs. No surprise there. So when you live in a neighborhood and it's relatively peaceful and calm, all of a sudden you're hearing about fighting and thefts going on just around the corner from where you live. What's going on? And then you start to dig a little deeper and ask more questions of other people. And it comes to light that there's a house a block away and it's got about 20 migrants living in there and are dealing drugs they are causing all sorts of nightmares, nuisances and disturbances. And the, the quality of life in that area starts to lower. What are the police doing? Like I said, police numbers are falling. And my only um, suspicions are um, the stress that comes with the job. Don't forget all of the bullshit laws and regulations that come out from 2020. Lots of people with common sense who are in the police said no i'm sorry i've been a police officer for 20 years i am not going to participate in this bs and they left some of them had a few years left for their pension and they just really struggled to do the last one or two years of their service before they finally retired and it's just crazy i was speaking to some of these guys it's unbelievable what they've had to go through the stress i you know, from a police officer, they don't want to handcuff someone who wouldn't wear a frigging mask in 2020. Lots of police, believe it or not, completely disagreed with the heinous laws that were coming out, not just in England. What about in Ireland? Like I said, the Garda in Ireland, unbelievable, off the charts. If you want to see um, a mild version of the SS, look at what was going on with the Garda in Ireland during 2020. It's unbelievable. And who remembers the, the COVID protests in 2020 and 2021 in London? Yeah, you didn't really see much of that on the news, did you? But nonetheless, they absolutely happened. I've seen videos. I've watched it live. There were thousands and thousands of people protesting all over London about the laws, the rules, the regulations for the safety of our privacy and all of the freedoms, etc. And the police were just had enough. Police have been leaving since then. The stress, the money, the crime, they're literally being put into a boxing ring with their hands tied behind their back. They're literally just at a loose end. And the stress in the police force is insane. It's not really talked about, but it's through the roof. The amount of PTSD going on in the police service is unbelievable. I've already known three police officers in the last four years. They have all left, all left, all of them now. They just couldn't deal with it anymore. So based on that alone and other things that you hear, I remember um, one of the police officers I was talking to two years ago now, he said there's a place in South Wales called Neath and there is whatever amount of thousands and thousands of people living there. They had three police officers to patrol that entire area. One sergeant and two officers in that huge area with thousands and thousands of people and crime is crazy there. I know, that's how thinly stretched the thin blue line is. So do you really think they're gonna come and save you or help you when all of this crap kicks off with all of these millions now of fighting age male migrants all over the UK and the West? 
do you think they're going to help be interesting to see what you guys think in the live stream we're going in there now to chat hmm engineer to succeed don't tread on me how you going guys good to see you guys jay awesome earth heart errants of course um david p fellow errants yes errants for sure tim born outside good to see you cornish bob yeah rachel good to see you as always yorkshire pud very cool so yeah we got some brian good to see you mate um i'm sorry you got a bit peeved of the eclipse but it all ties in mate i know it sounds weird but yeah it's crazy but nonetheless mate i'm not joking um urban areas at the end of july from what i understand are not going to be a safe place to be so like i say we need um to start preparing and the time to prepare is now because we have got time on our hands excuse me today is the 19th of april i'm looking at it, it's 9 11 how bizarre so yeah we haven't got that far away from this so there is absolutely plenty of time to um to do something if you can't book time off of work um if you can't get out of the area then um maybe take precautions um Travel on a different route than you usually would during those times. Try to keep um, to a minimum exposure going through streets with lots of people. Travel in a vehicle if you can. Um, if you do travel in a vehicle, make sure you keep the doors locked and your seat belts on. Always make sure that you've got a big gap um, in front of you at all times when you're driving. Because if something happens and you need to manoeuvre, you want to make sure you can at least drive around the car in front. Always keep your head in the swivel. If something happens, could you get out of there? Could you drive on the pavement? Is there any physical blocks on the pavement to stop you driving down there if you really had to? Could you turn around where you are? Don't allow yourself to be boxed in in the vehicle because you're going to be trapped. And the only way you're going to get out of that situation is to get out of your car, which is your safety zone, and go on foot. Have you got anything to defend yourself with? Have you got anything to stop puncture wounds? Would you be wearing anything under your clothing to help? All of these things are sensible, proactive steps that we can take. Now, there's all sorts of things that you can wear under your clothes that will stop a sharp pointed object. You don't have to spend a lot of money in body armor, ballistics, etc. I know some of you guys watching right now in the live chat will recommend some things. Brian, you probably got some as well. There is household items that we can use to absolutely stop that. Who knows that you can even get a magazine, like an A4 magazine, and wrap that around your arm and tape it. You won't be able to get a knife through that magazine. Simple things like that could save your ass. Think about it. And I know it sounds crazy. Of course it does. But I would rather be one step ahead of the game and prepared and hope nothing happens rather than be caught out in a situation running around like a headless chicken wearing a t-shirt and you're surrounded by a group of these animals with daggers and stuff you don't want to be that guy and i know it sounds scary of course it does but like i say we've got time now like i said in the title of this video the time to prepare is now start thinking about what you would actually do should you end up in a situation like we saw in London? Who remembers that attack? You remember? Near the House of the Parliament, near the bridge? That was just an ordinary day. Knife-wielding maniacs went into that restaurant and killed people. Who remembers the little children who were stabbed by these migrants in Ireland around Christmas time? These things have absolutely happened before. They have. Just because it hasn't happened to you and you haven't seen anything doesn't mean to say it won't. 
don't forget how many times do we keep hearing the same stories from victims i never thought it would happen to me every single friggin victim will say exactly the same thing thousands and thousands of times over in the past you can look at untold news broadcasts and bulletins of someone has been injured stabbed shot run over whatever i never thought it would happen in this town it never happens in this street nothing like this has ever happened before that's a classic victim statement do yourself a big fat favor do what you feel you need to do to ensure that your chance of possibly becoming a victim is very very small indeed the more you think the more you plan the more you prepare the more your chances are of not becoming one of those thousands of victims who have said i never thought it would happen to me but it did yeah every one of them victims said the same thing don't forget we've got time if we haven't got money think of different strategies what would you do it'd be interesting let us know in the chat guys um interesting what we got here uh first thing that popped up is charmaine says deep heat spray absolutely um you've got to be really careful about what you talk about on youtube but in terms of conditions about self-defense etc 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 but there are plenty of things that you can legally use to protect yourself only the other day i've done a live stream about o light torches and everywhere i go i carry one of these all it is is a torch that's all it is is a torch it's not illegal to walk around with a torch in your pocket but look at the size okay if you had to defend yourself you have got something at each end this end happens to be a hardened bezel very very tough and still which will break a glass window in an emergency to get out of a burning vehicle i am going to leave it to your imagination how effective this would be in a defense situation don't forget on here is a high powered strobe you shine that high powered strobe into the face of someone who is going to attack you trust me the first thing they're going to do is to close their eyes giving you vital seconds to make a decision and that decision is entirely yours and no one else's to make it can mean all sorts of things you could run away you could hit back you can alert someone's attention you are buying yourself time and all you've done is you've got a torch and you shined a light at their face and it's a strobe if anyone is interested about torches there's links below this video and you can get loads of discount right now if you need to everywhere i go i take that and you can tell i have by the condition of it all of the paint is coming off because i do i carry it everywhere and it just gives me um, a sense of relief because if anything does happen during the times that i'm in urban environments at least i've got something not everyone is a boxer okay but having something like a torch you will not be arrested for carrying a torch you will be arrested for carrying a knife obviously but listen here's the thing criminals carry knives because they don't operate inside the law so you are walking around outside without a knife with people on the streets who do have knives and we are fully aware that the police are not going to come and protect you the second that you need them it's never going to happen all i'm asking you is to think outside the box do what you can to make sure that you have got a fighting chance of getting away from the situation without becoming a victim this is an aware prepping community at the end of the day our fundamental default is we are preppers we should be prepping for anything which comes down the road and when i hear information and evidence of facts about potential situations like this absolutely i'm going to prepare for sure absolutely let's go for the chat um an axe no you won't you shouldn't really be walking around the street with an axe um carl pepper 
And it is illegal to carry pepper spray in the UK. It's illegal to carry a knife, which is longer than three inches, and that locks. I know. It's crazy. Chili sauce. Absolutely. Chili sauce. You can buy chili sauce. What about the ones in the squeezy bottles? You're not going to be walking up to someone and doing a bit of the HP on a glass bottle now, are we? So, yeah, use your imagination. Um, wasp spray, you could potentially use that. Um, if you're in a house, a hot chip pan, yeah. If you want to carry, um, if you want to keep um, a hot chip pan on the go all the time throughout July and August, it's up to you. Slave to no man, um, black gloss spray paint in a small can. Absolutely. You wouldn't want that in your eyes. Don't forget, these are defense ideas. These aren't um, created to attack people. These are items which you can use legally to defend your life, given the situation that there are thousands of fighting age male migrants running around causing rampage with daggers all over the West in the last week of July and the first week or so of August. What are you going to do? It's entirely up to you. I'm not going to tell you what you what you can and can't do. <laughs> no, of course not. It's just a torch. Um, perfume and hairspray. In fact, sprays are very good, very good because there are they are legal. Of course, they are aerosols. Okay, and hairspray. Yeah. Um, when I was an artist at art college years ago, we used to use hairspray, right, Rachel? If you're um, painting or using pastels and use it to fix, hairspray is like a fine glue to seal over your drawing so it doesn't um, get rubbed off accidentally. So, yeah, um, a spray aerosol glue, which is what hairspray is, you get that in your eyes, you're not going to be doing much for sure. um crossbows as far as i know crossbows are not illegal they don't require a license um well, i think it is illegal to hunt with one you can only use them for target shooting so i'm not going to say anything um rachel hey honey a torch absolutely absolutely 100 percent dave through night yep yeah, i used to um, use through night until they started breaking i'll go into o light now but yeah, if it works, it works. Absolutely. Ah, here we go. This is um, one thing I wanted to talk about a long time ago in this video. I completely forgot. So Peter Rouse, thank you so much for that prompt. And you've nailed it. You've absolutely nailed it. Lots of these fighting age migrants, they've literally disappeared off of the news recently. So if you was... If you can envisage this scenario, okay, fighting age male migrants, possibly some of them, which I suspect to be the case, handpicked and literally mingled with, shall we say, other migrants, all strategically placed in residencies all over the UK, they are all fighting fit. How many, and here's a very, very interesting question, all right? How many fighting age male migrants have you personally seen that are obese or extremely overweight? I would like to think that that's going to be practically zero. Based upon the images and videos which I've been studying for two years now, I have not seen one overweight fighting age male migrant. And why have they disappeared out of the limelight recently? Could it be that they are getting fit, ready for the fight, as it were. Could be. Would it be another coincidence? Could it be a coincidence that all of the Serco block booking accommodation all expires at the end of July? Could it be possible that Jason's analysis with isometrics and studying analysis of past history, which repeats itself as we know to be true, to put it, uh, precisely on the timeline of the Olympiads, i.e. every four years. And yes, we've got an Olympics in a few months from now. 
it's all perfectly poised so i would guess that lots of these fighting age migrants or probably all of them are seriously up in their fitness right now to give themselves the edge pardon the pun yeah so what have we got in uk loads of people going to weatherspoons getting hammered completely out of shape they're going to come up against someone who has been in war-torn countries and seen all sorts of crime and evil stuff that we can't imagine here in the west so to see someone get killed is probably no problem for them yet how many of you have seen someone be killed right in front of you not many so if you've got someone with that mentality you're used to that and then you're extremely fit and you're going to go up against some guy in weatherspoons absolutely sloshed i wonder who's going to win that fight and don't forget these guys are going to be heavily armed heavily trained and fighting fit how many have we got in the uk who meet that criteria to make it a fair fight as it were i would say we are probably at a disadvantage in the uk what do you think let us know in the live chat and if you're watching on the um, replay in the comment section it does seem a bit one-sided what's coming down and of course like any military tactic the element of surprise is going to be crucial how are these guys going to be alerted to go out and start causing rampage maybe a text maybe they all get a text a word they get activated they go out there and they do what they've got to do don't forget we're talking about religious fanatics they've got no problem dying because they're going to go and see their allah they're going to go in paradise and have all of these virgins and all of that stuff if you really believe that that's fine but i'm telling you these people are prepared to die for their cause what have we got in the uk doesn't look good so peter not physically prepared for a real fight a fight is won or lost within the first seven seconds did you know that it is exhausting fighting for real adrenaline takes over lots of you guys have probably been in a fight you know what i'm talking about i myself have been there a long time ago it's crazy it is not easy it's not what you think it is in the movies you are going to get knackered real quick especially if you're out of shape and you're up against someone who's fighting fit they've had all of his training and they've killed before think about it how are you going to fare what are you going to do to prepare for stuff like this it's crazy just popping in the chat yep football hooligans yeah i know but how many of the old football hooligans the old firms they're all my age now they're all in the 50s and 60s how many of them are going to go toe to toe with someone who's 19 years old fighting fit and has killed loads of people before already who's really going to win that one it's crazy <laughs> what's it rachel pork pie grenades hilarious <laughs> i'll tell you what the sausage rolls we had lately they're gonna take someone out for sure <laughs> bless you oh man that's awesome um matt absolutely mate most people have not been punched let alone been in a fight for their life absolutely absolutely and i'll tell you what it's a shock being punched in the face for the first time yeah that alone is going to literally psychologically affect someone so much they're not going to be able to do much else other than just take multiple more hits it's crazy um darren you've nailed it son street fights are fast and ugly yes don't forget we're not talking about queensby rules here anything is fair game in a street fight anything so yeah and lisa she says yes it's all planned i totally agree no way peter really in the usa the corporate media claiming anyone into fitness are white supremacists are you pulling my pisser really do you know what the more i hear about what's going on in america the more i think it's a joe biden clownville that place now in some states in america you're not even allowed to collect your own friggin rainwater in some states in america you're not even allowed to grow fruit and vegetables in your own property what the frig 
in some states you're not even allowed to carry a firearm even under the second amendment i don't understand what the hell is going on in america i do not know i really do not know so um here we go this is mick um uh, being a member for six months well done mick um they are sleeper cells yeah sleeper cells is a very good term to use and exactly that's what i believe that they are it's almost like um the sleeper cells of world war ii they come over here they embed themselves into villages and stuff stay there for years and all of a sudden they get that call and they carry out orders sleeper cells exactly what i believe is going on uh, we need to group together and stand as preppers and be ready for what's coming fair grumpy absolutely completely agree thank you for that donation as well mr grumpy yeah we do hence this community is amazing because we can bounce ideas off of people we can help each other and it's all good yeah really really good that's excellent news um owen thank you for that boarding frog yeah exactly and um end of day so thank you for that donation from a member as well send them to rwanda i remember reading about that in the news it's not looking very good is it either way they they shouldn't even be in this country if i was prime minister they wouldn't even be here simple as that um well thank you for that becoming a member that's fantastic um and ryan thank you to you for becoming a member and supporting the channel I really appreciate them donations, guys. That's fantastic. Um, speaking of um, donations over on PayPal, we have um, had some help from um, my my seller. I think that is. Thank you for that. It's very kind. And um, Carl, <laughs> Carl, thank you very much for that, sir. You are really helping, like more than you can imagine. You guys are awesome. So yes, if you can please share this video. I'm not joking it helps more than you can understand all you have to do is click that share link and send it to your um, groups that you're in whether it's whatsapp facebook twitter telegram all of those groups if you can share this video i would be very very appreciative because the more people that we can have eyes and ears ready for around the end of july the better we need to start preparing and the time is now everyone if you can hit the thumbs up on your way out i would really appreciate it because it helps distribute this video during another shadow banning session i know it really helps just hitting the thumbs up um if you want to um consider subscribing to the channel i would urge you to do so but don't forget that notification bell if you haven't got it selected to on you are not going to be noticed notified for live streams and i'm going to be doing live streams literally with half an hour's notice or no notice they're just going to be coming out there as soon as i get information which i feel is urgent enough they will be coming out there if you're not subscribed or you're not notified you will miss that live video and some of these videos are going to be time sensitive okay so it's really in our interest to see these videos live rather than watch them on the replay okay like i said some things need to go out at the time they need to go out of course and don't forget if you click below there is a newsletter you can sign up to that and you will get an email hopefully every single week over six thousand emails went out a few days ago and reaching loads of people should something happen to this channel being taken down based upon the information which i am sharing for free on youtube okay and let me see awesome so yep that's pretty much it guys we need to start getting ready for this don't forget the important date that we need to um keep an eye on is this one here on the screen friday the 26th of july until the 11th of august okay between those two dates we need to seriously open our eyes and switch on especially if we are in urban areas my advice take a holiday get out of dodge play it safe that's my advice take it or leave it like i said i hope to god i'm wrong there is another link to the video from jason of archaics outlining all of the research leading to what he believes is going to be kicking off around the paris olympics this year with these 
migrants and daggers all over the West. It's truly horrific, and I hope it's wrong. I really do. So thanks to the moderators, everyone who supported the channel. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Please share the video. I'm not joking. I can't mention it enough. It really, really helps. So the moderators, you are awesome. Love you guys. Now, there's going to be a shed load of videos coming out next week. Hold on to your ass. It's coming out big time. Now, you guys take care. Thanks for watching. Stay funky.